Cisco Systems makes a wide variety of networking gear and they also make um, something called Packet Tracer which will let us uh, simulate um, some pretty complicated networks and uh, let's look and see how this works I'm going to do just a simple uh, network, well two networks with a um, with a router but uh, let's build our first network and you'll notice down here in the lower left hand corner um, if I click on this little icon I get a selection of routers um, this icon will give me a selection of switches at this point I'm not too much interested in hubs we can do wireless. These, this is where our cables are, various types of cables. These are end devices, etc. So I'm going to pick out a generic PC and put it here. And uh, let's get another PC. We'll put it here. In a real network, we would have a switch. So let's find ourselves a switch. We'll just use the 2950. And move it right along in there. Now we'll eventually put a router in a, and then uh, add another network. But let's work with um, this one for the time being. We need to do some configuration here and if you click on one of these you're going to get uh, another window and this gives you some idea what's uh, what's available. You can actually look at a uh, physical representation of the device. Of course this is just a PC. Click on config here. Display name. We should change this make it something more descriptive. Now I'm just going to put the uh, the IP address in here. So I'm going to use a private range here 192.168 and we'll make this the 100 network and I'm going to use uh, say 21 for this particular uh, machine. Now while I'm here I'm going to put in a gateway although I don't have a gateway yet. The gateway is the router but since I know the IP number well or the network uh, IP range I got a pretty good idea what uh, the IP number of the gateway is going to be. For now I'm not worried about DNS. Alright, this is my network interface. It's fast Ethernet, which means it's 100 megabits per second, as you can see here. And um, I'm going to put in uh, a static IP address and I'm going to use the same IP address as I put on its label, which is 21. And we have to, to specify a subnet mask. At this point, I'm just going to use the, the default Class C subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. And I'm not worried about IP version 6 this time. Now, at this point, you can simply uh, click the X here um, or you can minimize it. There's no button here that says apply so as you type things in uh, they are applied. So I'm just going to minimize it. Now let's go back and uh, do the same thing with this one. I'm going to go to config settings. I'll give it a name as well all this uh, <clears throat> again using the IP number I'll just call that 22 and again <clears throat> the router when I add it is going to be at that address set up my fast ethernet here
again I'm perfectly happy with the default subnet mask minimize this now we need to uh, connect these to the switch so click on your connections icon here and uh, we're going to make this a wired network and all we need is the just copper straight through so if you click on that and hold it over a device and click again you're given um, a view of the available ports this PC only has one network interface so we select that so our switch here we uh, we have several ports available on our switch and I'm just going to take the well, in the interest of being consistent, I named, uh, um, I numbered this 22, so let's put it in the second port. Now these are link lights, the little guys right here. So we get a link light automatically here. We don't have one yet on the switch because um, the switch hasn't seen anything from the uh, PC yet to uh, know that it actually has a connection. Or at least I think that's what's going on. I didn't write the sigma. I didn't write packet tracer. And I haven't read all the documentation yet. See now the link light comes up, so the switch is recognized that something's attached to that port. Same process with the other PC. And to kind of keep up with my naming or numbering convention, I'll put that in port. Uh, zero slash one and um, you'll notice the way the ports are numbered you got fast ethernet which simply means 100 megabits per second and then you got zero slash one the first number would apply to a module and the modules start counting at zero the second number is the port on a module and the ports start counting at one this is just the way Cisco does it. So you'll notice here I have something connected to um, port 0 slash 1 and 0 slash 2 and the link indicates here um, and I can't point at it because if I do I'll lose this listing but the link indicates both are up. So we have a rudimentary network here. We got a couple of um, computers, um, and uh, in this case, we've chosen to connect them with a sw with, with a switch. And um, we could have connected them directly together if we want to use a cross up. Um, let me rephrase that. We could have connected these directly together, but we would have had to use a crossover cable. But uh, since we have an intervening switch, the crossover that we need to happen is happening inside the switch itself. So we're good there. Well, let's do a little test. I'm going to click on one of these. It doesn't matter which one. Go to the desktop and open up the command prompt. Let's do a simple connectivity test. Let's do a ping. 192.168. 121 press enter and we get a reply um, on a real network if a ping does not succeed that doesn't necessarily mean that there's a problem with the other computer or the problem with the uh, cabling um, anywhere between you and the other computer it could simply mean that the other computer is has been configured to not respond to pings and uh, Windows 7 probably Windows Vista although hardly anybody ever uses that Windows 7 and Windows 8 by default typically do not answer pings so it's nice if it's available it's often turned off and from a uh, from a security standpoint, you should certainly turn it off at your network uh, 
boundary, it's your border, uh, your border router. You should uh, configure it to ignore pings from the outside. So, kind of keep that in mind. So we've got some basic kind of connectivity here, so we're good. Now let's add a uh, a router. And let's see here. I think any of these will do what we want. So I'm going to pick this one. And I'll put it up here a little bit. Now I'm going to click on it and see what's available. Make sure that it has what I want. Um, config. And notice this is, although this is a simulation, it is fairly accurate. Um, I clicked on it immediately after dropping it in, and it told me it was still booting up. Um, the routers are a little more complicated as far as uh, what you could add to them. This is the view of the back end of this uh, this particular router that I've selected. Now these are modules that we could drop into either this um, slot or these slots. Now I notice here we already have two fast Ethernet connections. Now that'll do for our purposes today. So we're good. Let me change the router name here. Let's call it my router. And I'm going to pick um, fast ethernet 0 slash 0. Now, for some reason in this case, they started numbering the ports at 0. Now, they don't seem to, Cisco doesn't seem to do that on switches. So, a little confusing sometimes. So, I'm going to connect this to my existing network. And that's the 192.168.100 network. Now recall when I configured my workstations here, I set the the gateway up to be a dot one. So this is the gateway, and uh, I'm okay with the default subnet mask. Now notice here we got to turn this um, interface on. So I'll turn it on. And you can notice in the bottom here, uh, this little box shows you the equivalent iOS commands. iOS is the operating system of the uh, device. So to turn this on, I actually issued, or I could have issued if I were working uh, directly with the router, I could have issued a command called no shutdown, or you can abbreviate this no shut. Um, if you're in the right place. Now this tells you where you are in the operating system and to get there you had to be in config mode and then you type interface and specify an interface and notice then your prompt changes. Then you're configuring an interface. Now um, at least the versions that I've dealt with uh, don't tell you which interface you're configuring. I wish it, I really wish it did. Uh, hopefully, somewhere along the line here, we're gonna we're gonna get that. Um, if you want to see what the the whole process looks like, you can look over here under the CLI. This is the command line interface box. And you, in this case, this is the information that was generated when the router uh, booted up. If you're dealing with this directly, you could have went through the configuration dialog, which will ask more or less ask you questions and help you with your configuration. Um, I chose to manually configure it, so the simulation said no there. So I'm doing this manually. So we've got our first interface um, configured. While we're here, since I know I'm going to connect another network to this, 
Let's go on and uh, configure fast Ethernet uh, zero slash one, the other um, the other interface. So I'm going to go. I'm going to continue using private IP numbers. This time I'm going to make this the dot two hundred network, and since this is the gateway, and I like using dot one for the gateway address, I'll use that number IP number for this interface. And uh, take the subnet mask and again turn it on. And again, you can notice there in the bottom the the uh, command line uh, command would be IP address, and you specify the address. And you specify the subnet mask. And notice when I turn this on, it's going to issue a no shut. And uh, so this interface is up, although it's not connected to anything yet. So I'm okay with this. Um, I'm just going to close this one. Now we need to connect this network to this router and build ourselves another network. So I need a connection here. Again, copper straight through. Now, um, a lot of times in the real world, from uh, the switch to the router, you might want to go with one of these gigabits, but we don't have a gigabit module on our router yet. So I'm just going to pick the highest numbered port here. And over here, remember, we've got two um, Ethernet, fast Ethernet interfaces. But we configured this one, 0 slash 0, with the IP number of this network. So let's go back over here to this computer and run another little connectivity test here. I'm going to do another ping. This time instead of pinging the PC, I'm going to ping the router. Ping the gateway. Now you'll notice the first couple of um, pings actually timed out and then I got a reply. So if I do it again, you'll see I get replies immediately. Um, the way the simulation is written is uh, try to match what would happen in the real world. And we just configured this router. And it, uh, it could take a few seconds for the router to kind of get its grip uh, of what's really going on and reply to this ping. So we're good there. Feel pretty good about this. Now let's quickly go put in another network. We're going to need a switch. So we'll drop another switch in. We're going to need a, at least one end device. So I'm going to pull one of these out here. So let's go on and configure this one while we're here. I guess this is good. Config display name. Again, I think it's easier to keep up with all your IP numbers if you use your IP numbers as your display name. So over here we were using the 100 network. And remember we configured the router, uh, the default gateway, using 200 here. So, I'm going to use the 200.21 on this device, and we need to specify our gateway. And recall that was at 192.168.200.1. Not worried about DNS right now. Uh, come down here and actually assign the IP number. Two one sixty eight two hundred twenty one. Take the default subnet mask for a class C IP address. Okay, minimize this. Now we need some cabling. Uh, again, we're using copper cabling. 
So from here to here, and we need another one from here to here. Okay, so we're we're all cabled up there. So let's try pinging from this device all the way through to this one. So now instead of 100, we need to be pinging the 200 network. So press enter. Now again, our first packet failed, um, but then the router realized, um, and it may not be in this case just the router. There's a couple other things that has to happen here, but the uh, the network um, started functioning like we think it should function, and I get a reply from dot twenty one. For troubleshooting purposes. Sometimes you might want to do something like this. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm pinging 192.168.200.1, and you might think, well, that's just the router. True, but I'm pinging it from over here. So that ping went to here, and then what we would, what I would refer to as through the router. And actually, I pinged this interface, so the routing function had to work for that to work. So you should keep that in mind as a troubleshooting uh, mechanism. And the reason we didn't have to do anything else as far as configuration other than put in the appropriate and correct IP numbers is um, a router, of course, routes. And a router looks at the networks that are attached to its interfaces and uses that information to route. So as long as you only have one router, configuration is very minimal. Because see, the router knows that the 192.168.100 network is connected to one of its interfaces. It also knows that the 192.168.200 network is connected to another of its interfaces. And if a packet presents itself at one of its interfaces that needs to be sent to the other interface, it simply does it. Now, it gets more complicated when you add more routers, and we'll look at that later. But uh, I want to show you how you set up a simple, um, a simple IP network or two networks with one router. So we'll return and do more interesting things with this. By the way, if um, there's a few things you can do here. If uh, under options, preferences. If you um, don't like some of the things that are being displayed like you could turn off these link lights. I don't know why you'd want to turn off the labels. Um, so there's a few things here you can you know, change your view slightly. I'd be careful with this. You know, only do one thing at a time and make a note of what you did. So but you should always feel free to uh, look at some of the configurations. Look, I can change some colors here. So we changed the router I was taking. Well, let's try it. Let's click apply. See, now we have red texture. I kind of like that. I think I'll keep that. So, feel free to 
play around, you might make a little note of what the starting position is or starting configuration is on any of these things before you uh, change anything. And you should always change you know, no more than one thing at a time. That makes it easy to recover. And that goes for a lot of things in the uh, in the in the real world. Only change one thing at a time and make a note of what where you started. So we'll return to this at um, and do some other interesting things.